We're going to install Virtual Smart Zone version 5.1 on KVM. Before we begin, I want to cover a couple prerequisites prior to starting the installation. First, it's great if you have working knowledge of KVM and CentOS or Linux. This instance, we have KVM installed on CentOS version 7. We'll need to download the Virtual Smart Zone 5.1 qcow2.bin image for KVM specifically from the support portal prior to beginning. Now, the Virtual Smart Zone Getting Started Guide contains great information and it will help you navigate the installation process. We need to make sure that we have access to our KVM server. You're going to need SSH access to it and RDP access to it as well. Lastly, we're going to do an installation for an AP count range from 1 to 100. So we're going to need the following resources. We're going to need two virtual CPUs, 13 gigs of RAM, and a 100 gigabyte hard disk. Okay, we have our RDP session open and we have a terminal window open on the local CentOS machine as well. So what we need to do is we need to change directories into the desktop and then into VSE images. VSE images is where we've downloaded and saved the qcow2.bin files. So we're going to do a listing on that directory. And the first thing that we note is that our VSZ image file isn't executable. So we need to make that happen. We're going to run a ch mod plus x, which will make that file executable. OK, now that the file is executable, we can execute it or run it. So we're going to run a dot forward slash and then the VSCG file that we have. So we'll go ahead and run that. As soon as we do, we're going to be met with a licensing agreement. So I'm going to go ahead and blow this window up so that we can see. We'll accept that. Once we do that, now the file is going to go ahead and extract. OK, we're good. So the last thing, we're just going to do a listing on the directory, make sure that the file was extracted. We see that. So we're done with the terminal window. We're going to go ahead and minimize that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the VM manager. So here on the desktop we have an icon. You can see it's virtual machine manager. I'm going to double click to launch that and then we're going to navigate up to file and then we're going to create a new virtual machine. Okay, in the new VM wizard window that pops up, we're going to go down to where it says import existing disk image. We're going to select that, and then we're going to click on forward. Now, in this window, we're going to select browse. and the next window that pops up, we're going to go to browse local. Now, this is our local file system. We need to go to the desktop folder of VSE images that we have and select the QCOW2 file. Highlight it, and then we'll go up to the top right corner. We'll click on open. Okay, so now what we can do is we can select the OS type. Generic isn't what we want, so we're going to drop this window down. We're going to go to Linux, and then under version, we're going to select CentOS. Looks good, so we'll click on forward. Now we need to set our memory, so we're going to be specific. We're going to use 13,312 megabytes of memory, which equates to 13 gigabytes, and we're going to increase our CPUs up to two. So once we have that set, we'll go ahead and click on forward. Now we get a summary. We can see here that we need to rename it. We're going to rename this to VSZ51, just to be specific with what we're doing. Okay, final piece, network selection. We're going to drop this window down and select ENO2. Now, this was provided to us by the KVM managers for this virtual machine, so that was already decided. You'll have to make those decisions in your environment when you get to that point. Source mode, we're going to use bridge, but you can see here you have some different options. We've got that done, so we're going to go ahead and click on finish, and then our virtual machine is created, and it starts to boot up. All right, we're going to zoom through the boot messages. We're going to log in with our default credentials of admin, password as admin, enable, and then our enable password as admin as well. We'll run setup. We're going to get the profile built, do our networking and apply that, and then we'll continue with the setup process. All right, let's set the profile and IP. So for this, we're going to use essentials. So we're going to select one. It tells us that we can't change this profile once we select it, that's fine. Now we want to use IPv4 only, so we're going to use number one and we're going to set it manually. Our KVM or virtualization managers have given us some IP addresses to use. These IP addresses are tied to that environment. You probably need to do the same thing on your end, but for now, this is what we're going to utilize. So we're going to go ahead and configure this, and then I'll show you the confirmation messages. All right, I've gone ahead and configured the IP address, the mask, gateway, and DNS servers. This is what we've set before we hit apply. So now we're going to apply this, and what's going to happen is SmartZone is going to restart the network service. Now, when the network service restarts and comes back up, it's just going to ask us to verify it one more time, as you can see here. So we're going to go ahead and verify that, and then we'll jump into the GUI and we'll finish the setup process. 
All right, so we jumped into the GUI. We've gone ahead and given the cluster a name of VSZ51. We've given the controller name and description of VSZ Essentials, and we click on Next. All right, we set some passwords. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click on Next and check our summary screen. This is confirmation. If you don't like anything here, it's a good time to go back. You can make changes. We're happy with it. We're going to click on Finish. Now, this part does take around 20 to 30 minutes. It's a good time to get up, stretch your legs, grab some coffee. When you come back, we should have an up and running virtual smart zone instance running on KVM. All right, thanks to clip speed, we're going to see ours finish up pretty quick. Now, when you see this window here, it's going to give you a link to redirect you back to the GUI. So we're going to go ahead and use that. Now, one thing I want you to note when you're logged into the GUI is that it's going to show you that the cluster is offline. It might show you that all the services aren't up yet. This is completely normal. It happens on almost every single virtual smart zone installation. This will clear on its own. However, if you run out of patience and you want to make sure, you can always refresh the page. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to refresh the page, and now we see that our cluster is up and online. We have successfully installed Virtual Smart Zone on KVM. Check the description box below for great resources located on the Ruckus Support Portal. There you can find KB articles, documentation, videos, and more. Thanks for watching.